next is David, who also does a lot of volunteer work here. And a neat thing about him is that his wife and three kids have all volunteered here at the Bear Project. That's, <laughs> that's pretty righteous. So everybody give me a hand. One side, I run the Veracity Committee. If you're interested in actually performing and getting a little more than the five minute slot here, we have a performance every month. It's free, so you don't get paid. But if you're interested, get in touch, and we can get you on for a 20 minute set. It's the second Wednesday each month. Anyway. When's the next Veracity? Let's see, that'll be uh, February 10th, I think it is, the second Wednesday. But check, make sure it's a Wednesday. I might be off by day or two. It happens. Um, so I'm going to tell a story from my adolescence, which was an um, awfully long time ago. I was working at the uh, Neptune Theater back then in the 70s as a teenager. And um, there was this one guy that hung around, but he didn't actually work there, but he was a friend, so we let him in to see the movies and talk with stuff over. And he was kind of a nerd before that we had the modern concept of it nailed down so much, but he would go and get like um, old Lincoln Cadillacs that had been wrecked or blown their motor out and put new huge motors in with tur turbochargers and was into fairly insane car setups. But he also was into electronics and they just come out with a new bulk silicon process for these um, transistors that allowed them to get to incredibly high power levels, like 72 volt systems. You couldn't do that before without huge tubes that weren't that reliable. So we actually found that by writing letters to the local suppliers, we could get samples of these devices. So we got eight samples of the transistors, built this huge heat sink, built a power supply for the whole thing, worked out all the math on how to do it, and had this huge amplifier that took two people to move. The heat sink was all steel. Put that up in the booth at the Neptune Theater. And then we picked it up to the, built our own little optical connector for the input. And then we had to actually crawl up above the shell of the building, hanging from the rafters kind of, to get the wires from there to the backstage area. And we put together what they called the K-Horn Speaker Lab, which was a local institution back then. So these kits so you could build your own speakers. And this was um, these ultra-efficient, very high-end bass devices. They were used like to simulate sonic booms and stuff. We put two of those backstage, and we were calculating we could get something like 600 watts of power to each of them, which was fairly unheard of back then, except for large venues like you know the Key Arena or something. But we hooked that up when we had the Rocky River Picture Show one night and messed around with it. And we always had this strange intro we'd do where we'd put on a trailer, but then actually play music. Usually it was, uh, we'd been playing a lot of um, Jimi Hendrix at that point. So we'd start the music and put the Jimi Hendrix on and wait until they said, turn it up like they always did. And then we cranked everything up to a kind of insanely loud level. If you've ever worked in a projection booth in a theater, look around closely and you notice they're set up kind of as a bunker. They have concrete walls. Where there's a window for the projector, they'll actually have glass covering that. They have a slide to make sure, because you've got loud mechanical devices in here and you don't want to have to listen to that when you're in the theater. So this whole structure is designed to keep the noise out, or in, in fact. But we had to go in the other direction so loud outside. We had these uh, about three foot across aluminum reels that were up on the table that we were using to rewind the film onto. The music was so loud, it was shaking the table, and those reels were bouncing off of the table inside the concrete box. So the people outside, you couldn't hear a peep from them for the rest of the show. And, you know, it turns out, probably with what we know now, that was a damaging level of sound. But back then, we did stuff like that at concerts all the time. But it was strange, because we didn't really have any permission. We just kind of scrambled around. I remember being completely filthy and coated and greasy and sweaty getting the thing all hooked up and just how satisfying it was to get it so damn loud and the roof rumbling with that stuff. But, you know, it's just one of those peak experiences you didn't even realize at the time just how much fun you're having. You know? Thank you.